In the previous section, I mentioned that the region of thigh is divided into compartments. This division comes to be due to the presence of fascia. The fascia of thigh is seen as the superficial fascia and deep fascia, also called fascia lata. Let's talk about the superficial layer of the fascia first. The superficial fascia has two layers, a superficial fatty layer and a deep membranous layer, which are continuous with the corresponding layers of the anterior abdominal wall. The two layers are most distinct in the uppermost part of the thigh, near the groin, where the cutaneous nerves, vessels, and lymph nodes lie between the two layers. The superficial fatty layer is a layer of loose areolar connective or adipose tissue that connects the skin to the layer of fascia. If talk about the membranous layer in more detail, the membranous layer is loosely attached to the deep fascia of the thigh except near the inguinal ligament, where it is firmly attached along a horizontal line. The line of firm attachment is called Holden's line. It begins a little lateral to the pubic tubercle and extends laterally for about 8 centimeters. This deep membranous layer is clinically very important because when the urethra is injured in the perineum, urine may flow out or extravasate into the interval deep to the membranous layer of superficial fascia. Hence, urine can pass up into the anterior abdominal wall from where it can enter the upper part of the thigh. However, the firm attachment of the membranous layer of superficial fascia to the deep fascia along Holden's line prevents urine from descending into the thigh beyond the line. Moving on. The superficial fascia contains cutaneous nerves, cutaneous arteries, the great saphenous vein and its tributaries, and the superficial inguinal lymph nodes. We will discuss the cutaneous nerve supply first. We shall examine the elements of the superficial fascia using this diagram. Just concentrate for the time being on the colored area that depicts the nerves. The skin of the front of the thigh is supplied by following cutaneous nerves derived directly or indirectly from the lumbar plexus. The ilioinguinal nerve emerges at the superficial inguinal ring and supplies the skin at the root of the penis or over the mons pubis in the female the anterior one-third of the scrotum or labium majus, and the superomedial part of the thigh. Second is the, the femoral branch of genitofemoral nerve, pierces the femoral sheath and the overlying deep fascia below the midinguinal point and supplies most of the skin over the femoral triangle. The lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh is a branch of the lumbar plexus. It emerges behind the lateral end of the inguinal ligament, divides into anterior and posterior branches, and supplies the skin on the anterolateral side of the thigh and on the anterior part of the gluteal region. The intermediate cutaneous nerve of thigh is a branch of the anterior division of the femoral nerve. It pierces the deep fascia at the junction of the upper one-third and middle one-third of the thigh. It divides into two or more branches and supplies a strip of skin on the front of the thigh extending from the sartorius to the knee. The medial cutaneous nerve of the thigh is a branch of the anterior division of the femoral nerve. It divides into anterior and posterior divisions. The nerve supplies the skin on the medial side of the lower two-thirds of the thigh. Other than these five nerves, we also have the saphenous nerve that starts in the thigh and continues its course in the leg. The saphenous nerve is a branch of the posterior division of the femoral nerve. It pierces the deep fascia on the medial side of the knee, runs down in front of the great saphenous vein, and supplies the skin on the medial side of the leg and foot up to the ball of the big toe. Before piercing the deep fascia, the saphenous nerve gives off the infrapatellar branch, which runs downwards and laterally and supplies the skin over the ligamentum patellae. Here are all the cutaneous nerves that supply the region of the thigh. 
These nerves come together to form a bundle of intersecting nerves called the patellar plexus. Patellar plexus is a plexus of fine nerves situated in front of the patella, the ligamentum patellae, and the upper end of the tibia. It is formed by contributions from the anterior division of the lateral cutaneous nerve, the intermediate cutaneous nerve, the anterior division of the medial cutaneous nerve, the infrapatellar branch of the saphenous nerve. That is all about the cutaneous nerve supply of the region of thigh. Let's put the names of the cutaneous nerves in a list here. Now we will look at the vasculature of the thigh starting with the cutaneous arteries. Using the same illustration as the one showing the cutaneous nerves, here you can see the three small arteries arising from the femoral, a little below the inguinal ligament. 1. Superficial external pudendal artery pierces the cribriform fascia, runs medially in front of the spermatic cord, and supplies the external genitalia. 2. Superficial epigastric artery pierces the cribriform fascia, runs towards the umbilicus, and supplies the lower part of anterior abdominal wall. And third is the superficial circumflex iliac artery pierces the fascia lata lateral to saphenous opening, runs upwards below the inguinal ligament, and anastomoses at the anterior superior iliac spine with deep circumflex iliac, superior gluteal, and lateral circumflex femoral arteries. Other than these three small veins, the superficial veins of the lower limb are the great and small saphenous veins and their tributaries. They are comparable to the basilic and cephalic veins in the upper limb and have significant clinical importance. The great or long saphenous vein is the largest and longest superficial vein of the lower limb. It begins on the dorsum of the foot from the medial end of the dorsal venous arch and runs upwards in front of the medial malleolus, along the medial side of the leg, and behind the knee. In the thigh, it inclines forwards to reach the saphenous opening, where it pierces the cribriform fascia, and opens into the femoral vein. The great saphenous vein usually receives three tributaries that are variable in size and arrangement at the saphenous opening in the deep fascia. The superficial circumflex iliac vein, the superficial epigastric vein and the superficial external pudendal vein. We looked at these closely when we talked about the arteries in the region of thigh. An additional vein, known as the accessory vein, usually joins the main vein about the middle of the thigh or higher up at the saphenous opening. As for the small saphenous vein, the small saphenous vein located in the lower leg and thigh. This vein usually gives off a branch, the vein of diacomini, which extends up the thigh and runs between the biceps femoris and semimembranosus muscles. It begins in the ankle and runs up the back of the leg, behind the calf muscle, and along the inner aspect of the thigh. It drains into the popliteal vein, which is located behind the knee. So far, we have discussed the cutaneous nerve, artery, and veins in the region of the thigh. Let's look at the lymphatic drainage too. The lymph nodes present in the region of the thigh are called the inguinal lymph nodes. There is a superficial group and the deep group present within the deep fascia. The superficial group is further divided into horizontal and vertical groups. We will discuss both groups here now before moving ahead and talking about the deep fascia of the region of the thigh. The superficial nodes lie in the superficial fascia below the inguinal ligament and can be divided into a horizontal and a vertical group. The horizontal group lies just below and parallel to the inguinal ligament. The medial members of the group receive superficial lymph vessels from the anterior abdominal wall below the level of the umbilicus and from the perineum. The lymph vessels from the urethra, the external genitalia of both sexes, but not the testes, and the lower half of the anal canal drained by this route. 
The lateral members of the group receive superficial lymph vessels from the back below the level of the iliac crests. The vertical group lies along the terminal part of the great saphenous vein and receives most of the superficial lymph vessels of the lower limb. Lymph from the skin and superficial fascia on the back of the thigh drains upward and forward into the vertical group. The efferent lymph vessels from the superficial inguinal nodes pass through the saphenous opening in the deep fascia and join the deep inguinal nodes. Now let's talk about the deep inguinal lymph nodes. The deep nodes are located beneath the deep fascia and lie along the medial side of the femoral vein. The efferent vessels from these nodes enter the abdomen by passing through the femoral canal to lymph nodes along the external iliac artery. The deep inguinal lymph nodes are variable in number. They lie along the medial side of the terminal part of the femoral vein, and the most superior is usually located in the femoral canal. They receive all the lymph from the superficial inguinal nodes via lymph vessels that pass through the cribriform fascia of the saphenous opening. They also receive lymph from the deep structures of the lower lime that have ascended in lymph vessels alongside the arteries, some having passed through the popliteal nodes. That is all about the superficial fascia of the region of the thigh. As you can see here, we have already discussed many important structures in this region. The deep fascia of the thigh, which divides it into three compartments, will be covered in the next section. Have you ever heard of video books? Scotia.com is delighted to present video books, medical books that have been tailored into a series of videos. Scotia.com videos are presented in the same order as the book's chapters. Explore now and make your learning easy.